Now, all the way from the UK, comedian Samina Zera joins us in the Harvey Norman Lounge. She was last year's New Zealand Best and Fringe nominee and is making a much anticipated return to Wellington with several shows, including her critically acclaimed solo comedy, Tea with Terrorists. Welcome, Samina. Thank you for having me. It's lovely Yay! to be here. Psycho Panda. Psycho Panda. I see what you mean. Now he's beginning to creep me out slightly. He he's is very judgy. He's very judgy. He does judge the audience. Um, He's been with me through all my travels and he's been reviewed twice. Has he? <laughs> did really he get, stealing did, my limelight. Did he There's get good reviews? Of, he did get good reviews. It's, um, we may have to have like some sort of gladiatorial combat about this <laughs> at yeah, some point. No, oh, no, exactly. You, you tell him who's boss, that's for sure. Now, you are very talented because oh. take us through what you do. I mean, you know, blow your own trumpet, so to speak. <laughs> I do stuff. It doesn't necessarily mean I do it well. You have to <laughs> see it to make that decision. Anybody can do stuff. Um, but yeah, I've... Because you I've, sing. I do sing. Yes. You write poems, storytelling. Yes. You're an Comedian. actor. Comedian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes. and also, this one really caught my attention. You're an extreme doodler. Yes, I doodle. <laughs> how does that... How do, what is an extreme doodler? So, I, everybody doodles, right? Yeah, me. I'm terrible at it. Everybody doodles. Yeah. And I've always done that. But when I'm trying to... Because I'm, I find it very difficult to sit still or meditate or do anything calming. I, I doodle, and then they become these tiny doodles that become bigger and bigger, and I end up with these sort of massive doodles. Oh, so wow. So really, you just, they're extreme doodles, I guess. That, that I, looks so impressive. But, see, I doodle oh, as that... well. I do lots of love hearts and um, eyes for some reason. I don't know what that means. Somebody read something into that. But I don't make money off my doodles. You actually have sold some of them. <laughs> I have, I've only <laughs> sold a few of them because people asked me, so I just thought instead of having to print them and send them out and do stuff, I'll just put them on a website and people can buy them, yeah. You know what, I've right. seen a lot of doodles in that. <laughs> Some of the best doodles that I <laughs> have seen. Well, they are, that's why I call them extreme doodles rather yeah. than normal person doodles. Jeez, you are talented. OK, so let's talk about Tea with Terrorists. Uh, what, what is the show about? It is a story of how I ended up having tea with some terrorists. <laughs> OK. As you do. <laughs> what happened? Why can't, you'll have to come and see the show to find that Give out. Well, basically, thing. look, I mean, I spent quite a lot of my childhood in Kashmir, which is in the northernmost part of India, but they've had, like, 30 years of civil unrest now. And where there's civil unrest, there is the occasional terrorist, you know? Mm -hmm. We know that. We live in that world. Um, you don't, in, in, in New Zealand, you're all very nice and you don't have this problem, but the further north you go, the, <laughs> the northern hemisphere especially, we're mm, all over the place. So... Because I grew up in that and because I still have family who live there, these kind of things have become normal to them. It's their daily life. And I think it's similar with people who would have lived in Northern Ireland through the mm. Troubles or, you know, all sorts of places. So I just wanted to tell those stories because they are absurd. Can you give us an example? Because I'm just trying to think how you get a comedy show out of okay, with Okay, here's terrorists. the thing. So I was in a car with my uncle once, right? And we had stopped, this is in Kashmir, we had stopped at a traffic light. And this motorcycle pulled up next to us, and there were two guys sitting on it. Both their faces were covered. The guy at the back had an AK-47 across his legs. So my uncle was kind of keeping an eye on them. And then he just rolled the window down, and he went, Abdul, is that you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, hello. Um, and then just ran... <laughs> That kind of thing happens. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That so you just you've got to you've got to give up on the fear and you've just got to go. This what what are we doing here? This is hilarious. So last year you did a show called Homicidal Pacifist. That is right. Is this following on some sort no, of thing? No, not at all. Not at all. This actually, uh, Diva Terrace is an old show, but I, last year I was doing Homicidal Pacifist at various fringes, and then I brought it here to test out Wellington, and I absolutely fell in love with Wellington Fringe. It's just it's pretty much the best fringe. I love it. Um, and so then I thought I'll, I'll come back this year and I wanted to bring this show. This is an older show, but um, I wanted to bring it. It's a storytelling show and I think Wellington will, will enjoy it, I'm hoping. No, I'm sure they will. Yes. And you have done some great work as an ambassador for New Zealand, <laughs> bringing people back. Who had she brought to New Zealand, who we had on the show just <laughs> last week? We will tell you more about that straight after this. Great to have you with us on the cafe, and we are in the Harvey Norman Lounge with UK comedian Samina Zera, ahead of her Fringe Festival show. Now, last week we had a man, Doctor Blue, Mike McKeon. He is your husband. He is. And he was saying that you have, because um, you're doing a few shows in the Fringe mm. together, a couple together, and some separate. But he was saying that you really wanted to come back to New Zealand. That you yes. are thinking about maybe moving here. 
I would love to. I think if we can come and stay and you know perform and do sort of some sort of cultural exchange artistry, I would love to come. And I'm, Sheeran wants to do that too, though, you know. Does he? Yeah. Mm. Well, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that Ed Sheeran will get his visa much easier than I will. <laughs> is all I'm saying. Hey, you're on the right show. Don't you worry. <laughs> he hasn't been on the show yet. <laughs> it's working in your favour. Um, no, but obviously, you know, you travel around the world quite a lot with your work. So you're a bit of a travelling nomad, I guess. Love it. What is that made the Wellington Fringe Festival stick out for you? Okay, so the thing about Wellington Fringe Festival is that it's contained. It's a human scale festival. There are about 130 shows, I think. And what that means is that um, A, the audience can get to see quite a lot of stuff. It's not overwhelming. But as artists as well, what you end up doing is being able to see a lot of other artists' work, oh, nice. which is part of the fun of doing mm. a fringe, you know. And I think Hannah Clark, who runs it, has been, and all her team, they're just amazing. It's very artist-led. So as an artist or a performer, you feel absolutely um, nurtured in that kind of a fringe. Like, I go to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, which is great. It's the biggest open arts mm. access, you know, Everyone's fringe that one. in mm. the world. Three and a half thousand shows in a month. Oh, it's wow. daunting. It's daunting. <laughs> so much you can do. It's wonderful. It's wonderful and it's exciting and it's all those things. But I love the idea of being able to come here and be in this sort of human scale fringe, mm. which is all about creating new art. Because the comedy part is quite new for you, isn't it? You've only been doing it for about five years or so. About six years, almost six, six years. Because yeah. you were uh, an, actor an actor and you toured with the Royal Shakespeare Company? Yes, I did a show with them. We went up to, we took it to New York and played the Apollo Theatre in Harlem, which wow. was, I, mean, I think once I'd done that, I thought, I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to talk this. now, we're going to yeah. go from here. Because it's quite a change, really, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, it's it's on the continuum of performance. Uh, it's just that I I'm more in charge of what I'm doing because it's mm. I write the shows, so it, I stand or fall on my own, and I don't get to hide behind somebody else's. And words. you don't get to take Psycho Panda on stage when you're doing Shakespeare. I, no, I don't. I, I could have done, but I don't. You know. <laughs> And tell us about the other show you do, Fiery Tongues. How, how would you explain that? Fiery Tongues is a, it's a wonderful show. It's a sort of call to arms. It's a narrative poem written by an anarchist poet called Hefkut Williams. Mm -hmm. And it charts the... Um, it celebrates all the words that have changed the world for good. So it references about 60 to 80 different poets from Babylon all the way to Tahrir Square via Shelley and Mirman Bahir and... Um, all sorts of different stuff and there's a live score which Mike has, uh, Mike Dr. Blue has written and plays on stage and wow. we sing some protest songs and we also have local New Zealand poets who come in and do a little bit of guest poetry on it um, and it's a five, it's a five-hander so there's five of us doing it. That sounds quite ex extraordinary and I love, I love watching live poetry, there's something about it that's really it's quite special. It's amazing, I, I, it's lovely being part of it as well, I think the world we're living in at the moment, mm. you know, we need a call to arms mm -hmm. and we need to remember how much you know non-violent passive resistance has been instrumental in changing the world and the, all those poems and all those things that come back to us whether it's Shelley's you know ye are many they are few or whether it's Warsan Shire nobody leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark whether it's Oscar Wilde whether, there's just all of those things that have inspired people to make great changes um, so I love doing it I love being part of it I'm what thankful. a fascinating person you are. We are so lucky <laughs> to have you. Oh, thank you. That's right. And I hope Psycho Panda hasn't judged us too much. No, no, he like, I think he likes you. Look, oh, good. Look, look at his face. <laughs> nice. He, he's got a smile, kind of. <laughs> nice yeah. work. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks a lot. Tea with Terrorists shows at Bats Theatre in Wellington from tomorrow until Tuesday. You can check out the Fringe website for other performance details as well.